Hey everybody, welcome to our video on writing and reading sequential files in Microsoft Access. In this video we're going to write to a file using write pound and then read the same file using the input pound. Recently I made some videos for writing to text files and had intended to make some follow-up videos for reading text files. And when I started to plan the videos for the, the reading from the text files, I realized that a better approach probably would have been to pair up the various writing and reading methods with one another into a single video. Now those older videos I did on writing should still stand on their own. You can use those for uh, actually the examples I was giving at the time, or, you know, writing a, a log file or error file or, or creating text files for some external process to, to use as input, say a mainframe or Excel spreadsheet. Those will still work just fine. However, being that the way you write a file in Access needs to be coupled, if you will, with the way you read it, I think pairing them up this way in a single video is probably a better idea. So if you're going to write a file using the write pound, you need to read that file later using the input pound. And vice versa, if you have a process that you know is going to use the input pound for reading, then you're going to want that file to be created using the write pound. And the same is true for print pound. If you're going to use print pound, you're going to want to use the line input pound to read it, and vice versa, of course. The, the file creation process and the file consumption process are, to a degree at least, coupled together, at least in the, the manners that you will use to create and read them, or create and consume them. Let's take a look at a form that I've built for displaying our examples here. So this form should look similar to the other forms I've used for creating text files. At the top I've got a, a button for us to choose a folder to put our file into and to read it from. And the text box below that is for the file name we're going to create and read from. I've got four text boxes here which will where we will input the data we want to write to the file. And below here is for reading. This is going to display when we when we get to reading the file we've created I'm going to display field by field what we what we read in this text box. So let's head over to our code window here. Well, I'm not going to look at let's pop back over here. I'm not going to look at the code for this choose folder button. Okay, we've been over that code a bunch of times, and I'll put a link to a video uh, describing how to call the the, uh, the file, office file dialog. So we're going to look at the code that we have behind this write button. We're going to create a text file first and write to it first before we try to read it. Okay, so behind this write button is this code. Here's a command write dot click event. Got a couple of uh, variables up here. A file number, a file name, a DOB as a date, and an integer ID. We'll see those in just a minute. The first thing I'm doing here is validating that I've got data in my in my file name and my folder name boxes. Want to make sure that we know the name of the file we're going to create and where we're going to save it. And if we don't, we're going to give our users a message box and get out. Next, we're going to validate that we have data in our ID text box, our last name, and our first name. And if we don't, we're going to give our users a message box telling them they need to fill in those data items. Below that, we're going to make sure that our ID field is numeric. And if it's not, we're going to again tell them that it needs to be numeric. Now, truthfully, that ID field there doesn't need to be numeric. It could be a string you know, or a combination of, of numbers and letters. But I want to show that the write pound is a data type aware method. So I wanted to have at least one numeric data item. So I've got a numeric data item, we've got a date data type next, and we've got two strings. So I just wanted to show how it handles the various data types. Okay, so below there, oh, let me back up. If the text ID box does hold a number, then we're going to load that into an actual integer variable, this guy right here, okay? So we can show you how the write pound handles actual numbers, the data type integer. We're going to do the same thing with the DOB field. If it is not a date, we're going to give the message box and tell them to make sure it is a date. If it is a date, we're going to load it into a date variable right there. Next, we're going to build our file name by concatenating our folder and our text file. This is going to be the file name we're going to create. Then we're going to use the free file function to get the next available file number. Then we're going to open our file using the file name we just built from our form. 
open our file name for append as and the file number we just obtained from the system. So I'm using append here because if the file already exists and you open it for append, it will add to the file. And we are going to do that in a moment because I want to write two records to this and my input form is, is built for just writing one record at a time. If you open a file for append and the file does not exist, it will create the file for you. And below that is our write pound statement. And here's a syntax. It's write and then pound file number. And then from there, you give it a comma and then a comma delimited list of the items you want to write to the file. I'm writing our four data elements from our form, our ID, a comma, last name, a comma, first name, comma, and then DOB. Now as far as delimiters go, this list can be delimited by commas or spaces or semicolons. They all work equally well. Let's head over to our form really quickly and create a file for us to read in a moment. I'm going to call it test1.txt and then let's fill in, let's see, one for record ID, Johnson for last name, Phil for first name, 520, um, 1970, let's say. Write that to our file. Okay, let's write a second record. Let's make this a really long last name. And who cares, right? Okay, write that to our file. Let's take a look at what we got. Slide it over here, pop up on the wrong monitor. So we got, there's our ID, our name, last name, whoops, our last name first name and you can see our date of birth is in not the same format that we wrote it out in. When you use the right pound it automatically converts your dates to an international format which is century century year year dash month month dash day day. And You also notice that you get if you have a single digit month you get a zero in front of it. Several other things to notice here you get a comma delimited record when you do this, and that's regardless of whether you put spaces or semicolons or commas on your write statement. And strings are enclosed in double quotes. Dates, as you can see, are enclosed in your pound sign. And numbers are not enclosed by anything. These follow the rules that you would expect in a SQL. You will have issues. You will get a runtime error. Well, let, me, let me back up. Let me say it a different way. If you write a string, that has an embedded single quote in it, the right pound is going to turn the single quote into a double quote. And if you try to read that record back in using the input pound, you will get a runtime error. So if you've got double quotes in your strings, either replace them with something else, a single quote, or don't use the right pound, an input pound. Another thing to notice is this is not a fixed format file. In other words, notice where first name starts on this record and first name starts different location here. So this is not going to be suitable for, for feeding to a mainframe. It will, however, because it's common limited, it should run into Excel just fine. So let's close that. Let's head back over to our code window. What I want to look at next is the read button. We're going to read this file back in now and display the contents in this box below. So let's head on down our form. We're going to come back to that comment to code in just a minute. Here's the full method for our read button. Again, we've got a file number, file name here. I've got variables defined to receive the data from our input record, an integer for our ID, two strings for the names, and a date for our, our DOB field. We're going to ignore this for a minute. This should have been commented out. We're going to clear out our text box in the form before we write anything to it. That's going to hold our, our results, if you will. We're going to build our file name again by concatenating our folder with our file name. We're going to obtain the next available file number using the free file function. Store it there. We're going to open our file for input, again using the pound file number. Then we're going to create a loop. Okay a do while loop. We're going to perform this loop while 
our file is not at into file. Here's our read statement, the input, pound, file number, comma, and it follows the same syntax as the right pound. You put a comma delimited list of variables here to receive the variables that you wrote or that you're expecting from an input record. So this is why you want to pair up the right pound with the input pound. They're built, so to speak, to work with one another. So you need to know what position or in other words, what order your variables or your, your data elements are going to be in. So we know that the integer ID came first, then the last name, then the first name, and then the date of birth after that. And what we're going to do to display those for us on the screen is we're going to write those to our text results text box. We're going to have a label here, a hard-coded label, ID, and then we're going to put that guy right there, give us ourselves a new line, and then do the same thing for the last name, the first name, and the date of birth. Save, let's hunt over here, and we're going to read that file now. And you can see here, those are the two records that we wrote. The first one, there's our name, our date of birth, and it's converted that date from the international date format back to our system format. There's one more thing I want to look at. In a previous video, I used a user defined type to define a fixed format record that we were going to write and that is this guy right here, this public type fixed record. And what I did there was I had each element inside here as a fixed length string so that each field started at the same position on every record. Now I want to use this in a slightly different way this time. I've got one defined here called input record and my ID is an integer just like it has been in our, in our example currently. Last name, first name, and DOB is a date here. So still we cannot write a user defined type directly on a write pound statement and we can't read it directly as a user defined type using the input pound but we can do this. Let's uncomment this and comment out our write statement here. What we can do is we can declare an instance of our user defined type. I'm going to call it rec and you can move each uh, input field into each element in your user defined type, you just can't say write pound file number comma rec. You can't do that. You, st you can you have to use each individual field, comma delimited, whatnot, just like we did above here. But if you like the idea of being able to look at a user defined type, kind of sort of like a record layout, you can do this. Okay. So let's run over here and. keep getting younger. All right, we head back over to our write, excuse me, we head back over to our read button now. I comment out the one we were using, and uncomment this version of the input, and uncomment our declaration of our user defined type here. So again, we're going to declare rec as an input record, our user defined type, and down here then we'll read it. We're going to read each data element from our input record into our user defined type like we did before and then we will display our user defined types on our form and it should work the same way and there we go no difference so that's it for this video in this video we used the write pound statement to create and append to a text file and we used the input pound to read that record back in and we were able to because the two methods are, are built to work together, we're able to read our data elements back into the correct variables and then we can use them for whatever purposes you have in mind. So I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.